Hi everybody, my name is Julia from Bobbins and Buttons and today I'm going to do a sew along for the Lily Array pattern. This is one of the patterns from my pattern range. Um, it's for a little girl's really easy fitting um, dress and it also has a long line top length on it. It's got little flutter sleeves and elasticated neckline. The size range on this is three months to ten years um, and I think it's just a, an ideal little pattern for the summer months and I also think it's great if you wanted to make a gift for a little baby or a, a little girl um, because it's because it's so um, easy fitting you've got a bit of flexibility I think if you're a bit unsure about the size um, and the other thing I wanted to mention is I also have a free downloadable nappy cover pattern on my blog so I'll add a, a link below the video for that but if you wanted to make it as a gift I think making the two together makes a really nice set um, for a little uh, baby or toddler. So let's get started. So to start with, um, I've already stitched the centre back seam. Um, I just wanted to quickly mention the reason why the pattern has a centre back seam is purely for fabric economy. Um, if it was cut on the fold um, you would use a bit more fabric. So. Um, if you wanted to cut it on the fold you could reduce the pattern by the seam allowance and then place it on the fold um, but it will use a bit more fabric. So all I've done is I've just stitched that together and neatened the uh, raw reg. And just because I've used um, a one way print I just wanted to quickly mention this. Um, it's just worth checking when you've laid your pattern pieces on your fabric that they're all going in the same direction if you are using a print that's one way like this because if I'd laid my back pieces the other way to the front I'd have upside down boats on one of the sides. Um, I mean if that doesn't bother you then that's fine but um, you know I wanted boats all to be in the same direction so it's just one of those things to double check um, just before you cut. So to start with we need to attach the sleeves to the body pieces. So the sleeves and the uh, body pieces both have notches. So the front um, sleeve and fronts will have a single notch and the back sleeves and back body piece will have um, two notches. So I'm going to go ahead and pin all of those um, and show you how that looks. So if you're a bit unsure about or you haven't marked your notches properly, they do match fairly accurately. So that's your back. Your back piece is the longer piece and the front is the shorter. So um, when you match them together, if it's not looking quite right, it's probably in the wrong sleeve. So you can see that. matches fairly accurately to the armhole. So I'm going to go ahead and pin all of those and stitch them all one after another. So all of these are right sides together, I forgot to mention that. Um, so once all, all the fronts, or both the fronts and both the backs are stitched, uh, pinned together, we can stitch those and then neaten them. I'm going to neaten them with an overlock, but you can also use um, a zigzag stitch. But what you'll have is something that looks like that, so a big kind of circle. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch those and um, then we'll move on to the next stage. So 
worth um, reinforcing with backstitch at the start and finish of each seam just to keep it strong. So there we go, those are all stitched. Um, what I'm going to do next is just overlock these um, and then I'm going to come back and show you the next stage. So I've overlocked those um, sleeve seams and I've pressed the seam towards the sleeve. Um, and while I was there, the next stage is to press the, the hem of the sleeves but not stitch it. So I just want to talk about this for a second because um, it's different on different fabrics how easy this will be. So for craft weight cotton I find it fairly easy just to go ahead and turn a double, so turn it once and then turn it again so it's a very narrow double turned hem on the edge of the sleeve. Um, and I find, like I said, I find it quite easy to do that on craft weight cotton because it's a very easy, stable fabric to work with. But if you're using something more um, softer or a bit more um, prone to fraying, um, you might want to try this technique, which is to actually stitch a row of um, stitching around the edge approximately half a centimeter away from the raw edge and then trim it back to a little bit less take a couple of mil off and then turn it turn it on the stitch line the stitch line sort of helps it um, uh, gives you a line to fold to and then you can turn it in again so I've just done that I don't know if you're going to be able to see it on camera probably not um, but I've just done it on this one, um, just as as you know, second demonstration. But both of them are pressed. The seams, the, the hems rather, are pressed into position. But like I said, I'm not going to sew them at this stage. They're just pressed um, because the idea is we want to keep that fold line ready to stitch um, for the for when um, we can actually sew it. But at this stage. I'm going to now pin and stitch the underarm seams. So we want to fold out the turning that we've just pressed in so that you can start from the raw edge. Um, so the rest of it's still pressed in, but we're going to start actually sewing from the raw edge. So I'm going to pin that. And so we're pinning from the edge of the, the sleeve right through to the bottom hem line. So like I said we've got the, the seams of the um, sleeves pressed towards the sleeve and we want to make sure those are matched up at the underarm as well. So it's probably best just to start from that in case things aren't quite accurate. And then pin all the way to the bottom. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. Just need to trim up some of my overlocking ends. So I'm going to go ahead and sew those uh, underarm seams now and then I'm going to overlock them as well. So there we go, those are stitched. Um, I just realised as I went around the corner you need to pivot. Um, so leave your needle in um, when you get to the, the corner where the, the seam, the armhole seam is and just pivot by once you know just pivot round the corner to keep going down the straight so you get a slight angle there. So what I'm going to do now is overlock um, this edge 
and um, then I'll come and show you the next stage. So there we go, the seams are all stitched and overlocked. Um, so this is where the turning of the sleeve edge hems um, comes into its own really because they're already prepared and ready to stitch and rather than um, trying to press that into a, a hem now which you'd have to do really over a sleeve board or it'd just be quite awkward to, to handle with the iron it's, it's all ready to stitch and we can stitch it in um, a circular as well so I'm just going to put a couple of pins in to hold it um, but you will find fabrics like like Craftweight cotton or poplin or, or any um, fabrics that are fairly stiff will hold the hold the shape quite easily and you may not even really need to pin it if you're feeling fairly confident but I'll just put a few pins in it's quite curved at the center edge and you need to keep this um, hem very narrow otherwise it will go into strange folds at the centre because it, it is slightly curved so it does need to be a very narrow hem so there we go that's ready to stitch I'm going to pin the other one up Just check your seams are pointing to the back. And there are other edge finishes you could do. Um, you could do um, a rolled hem overlock finish on the edge of this sleeve if um, you're using quite a fine fabric like double gauze it works really nicely on double gauze that's another option um, it keeps it nice and uh, neat so those are ready to stitch so I'm going to take the table off my machine um, and stitch around those and I'll show you how that looks in a second. So there we go, the um, armholes are all stitched. So the next thing to do really is the, the neck edge. So this is really the reason why I've graded this pattern as a difficulty level of two. Um, because it's got bias binding but once you're used to bias binding it does um, as you can see it goes together really quickly so I don't think bias binding is too difficult to get to grips with um, there's just a few things that I want to mention obviously in the pattern I've um, suggested using 12mm bias tape and 8mm elastic so that it becomes just a very narrow elasticated neck edge so it's nice and neat looking, um, but I don't actually have any 12mm here today, so I'm going to use a 2cm and I'm using a satin tape so it'll be nice and gentle around the little girl's neck. Um, but the, the key thing to bear in mind if you do switch the sizes is obviously your elastic does need to fit into the channel and obviously you don't want it floating around too much so you, you don't want the elastic to be um, much much smaller than the bias and likewise you don't want it to be much bigger than the elastic otherwise it's just they're just not going to go together um, but I think I'm just about going to get away with um, this combination so let's give it a try um, so to start with we need to pin the bias tape around the neck edge so I like to start this at the back, um, somewhere between the centre back and the this, this first sleeve seam, but not on a seam, um, because it becomes a little bit too bulky at that point if you do everything on the seam. So I'm just going to start between those two points 
and what I'm doing is I'm folding out the edge so we've got raw edges matched so the raw edge of the top and the raw edge of the binding and then I'm also folding in the, the raw edge, the cut edge so just about one and a half centimetres and then I'm going to start pinning around the neck with that kept folded in so I'm just going to pin that um, I'm just going to pin it because I've got a whole roll I'm just going to keep pinning until it reaches round and then I'll cut it but you might want to measure first if you're buying it um, in a smaller quantity so I'm just going round matching those raw edges and pinning with that um, unfolded So now I've got to the, the point where I started pinning. So I'm just going to cut this a little bit longer so that the two overlap. So I've actually allowed a little bit extra just in case when I'm sewing it shortens um, too much. But basically when I get close to the end I just want this to overlap by about one centimetre or one and a half centimetres so that when you turn it back you've got the folded edge here um, and the other the raw end underneath there so I'm going to go ahead and stitch that all the way around now um, starting from the folded edge here and then um, letting that fall into place when we get to that end so I'm going to stitch that and I'll show you how that looks in a minute So I've stitched round. As I got to the end, I just trimmed a little bit of excess off the end of that binding, and they've now, now nicely overlapped. So that's how that looks. So what I like to do now is just take this to the iron and just press, keeping the, the folded edge folded in, but just press this all away um, so that I get a nice sharp edge, because the next thing we're going to do is turn the binding to the inside and stitch along this edge um, but I want this to be nice and flat so I'm just going to press the seam um, up into the binding so this whole seam is just nice and flat so I'm just going to do that and then I'll come back and show you the next stage so I've got ahead and um, pressed that so now like I said the next thing is to just pin this edge down um, so I'm going to go around and pin the edge that we're going to stitch pinning this round so I'm going to pin all the way around and then we'll stitch this and we just need to leave a small gap for the elastic So again, I'm going to stitch um, starting at the back, but on a piece that isn't um, where the joins are. Just I'm going to leave a gap of about two or three centimetres um, so that I can insert the elastic. So sometimes it's quite nice to, to put a pin um, 
just to remind you to stop at that point, just to put a pin in um, vertically, just so that you don't forget to stop, um, and just start around about here. So I'm going to stitch all the way around that, um, and then I'll show you the next stage. I'm going to be stitching on this, this edge, close to the edge. I might actually bring my stitch line in um, a little bit, about a millimetre closer than I normally would, um, just because this is a slightly wide binding to keep it a bit neater. But I have to be mindful that I want to make sure I'm catching that edge um, so I can't bring it in too much. go. Neatly finished edge with the binding. So now we're ready to insert the elastic into the channel um, and hem the dress and it is literally finished. So I've got the elastic cut to the size that I'm making. Um, all the cut lengths are in the pattern um, and obviously if you are able to measure your child um, you can you can change that, but I'm making this as a gift, so I'm going for the generic size. So all we need to do is um, take, a, add a, a safety pin to your the end of your elastic and start to thread that into the little hole that you've left. Um, sometimes it's a good idea to just pin this end to the dress just to stop it disappearing, otherwise you've got to start again. So I'm just going to start threading that elastic through the channel until it comes out the other end. So there, we've got my two ends are out. Um, now, it's slightly tricky, but try and um, check that your elastic isn't twisted in the channel. Um, and then undo your safety pin um, and lay the two ends together so that the elastic is flat, one end on top of each other. And then just stitch that together on the sewing machine. It, you can just go up and down a few times with straight stitch or, or um, a zigzag stitch, just to make it strong. Um, so let's do that. You might need to pull the elastic out again just to, to get enough room to stitch it. a few times um, to make that strong and now we can just pull that into position around the neck and there we go we're starting to see the dress so um, before I do too much more I'm just going to close that gap so I'm just going to literally sew those two points together, reinforcing um, at either end so that doesn't come open. dress. So all that's left to do now is to sew the hem and then it's completely finished. So while I was pressing the neck binding um, I pressed the hem into a double turned um, one centimetre hem finish. So all I need to do now is literally stitch around that um, and it is completely finished. So let me put a few pins in to hold this hem line.
go. So now I'm going to go ahead and stitch that and I'll show you how it looks at the end. So there we go, completely finished dress. Very, very quick and speedy little make. And very pretty. So there we go. Just need to trim that up and um, we're all done. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, if you'd like to see more tutorials and more videos, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. See you soon.